Hi, welcome to this new week. It's a Bank Holiday Monday, so I hope you'll not only get a chance to relax, but take time out to reflect on this series, The Holy Spirit, The God Who Knows No Limits. If you remember the encounter Jesus had with Nicodemus late one night, responding to two of his questions, Jesus replied, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. And to the second question, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. When the Spirit of God and the Spirit of a man or woman come together, a spiritual birth takes place. They begin a new spiritual life. Jesus says that to receive and experience the Holy Spirit is like being born again. Father Renero Cantalamassa was the Pope's personal preacher. And he said this about receiving the Holy Spirit. It's a new birth in the sense that everything becomes alive. The Holy Spirit doesn't change anything and he changes everything. He doesn't add to anything to what Jesus has already said or instituted, but he makes all things, all, all that Jesus has said and done alive today. This is what the Holy Spirit is meant to be, the one who accomplishes, who realises, who enacts the work of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is a relationship, a person, a person of love between God the Father and the Son. If human love can change the lives of two people, imagine what the Holy Spirit does when he come, comes upon a person and when he is accepted and welcomed. It can't be a more rewarding experience than the experience of the Holy Spirit. Every Christian has the Holy Spirit living in them. The moment you give your life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives in you. Paul says, if anyone doesn't have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. Paul goes on to say in Ephesians 5, be filled with the Spirit. The tense here means to be continuously filled. He's not exhorting us to be full of the Spirit or to be filled as a one-off experience. He means to be continuously filled with the Spirit. Go on being filled over and over and over again. When we first moved into our house, we had an old gas boiler with a pilot light that was always on. But when the heating came on, the boiler went Pow! It fired up with all the burners fully lit. Some Christians are like pilot lights. Others are like Pow! Christians. So what's it like to experience the Holy Spirit? Father Renero described it like this. Whatever the Holy Spirit touches, the Holy Spirit changes. So it's normal. A normal experience of the Holy Spirit will bring some changes, even in our feelings, in our emotions, in ways of expressing ourselves. A very special kind of intoxication, laughter, joy, tears, peace, an overwhelming feeling of love. The Book of Acts suggests five categories of people's experience of the Holy Spirit. So often people are in a similar place today. In Acts 2, there are those longing to be filled. The disciples at Pentecost, they've been praying since Jesus told them to, to wait in the city to be clothed with power. They long to be filled. Those today longing to be filled will be filled. There are those who are receptive to the Holy Spirit. Oh, I'm open, I'm receptive. In Acts 8, Peter and John were sent to Samaria where they found believers who'd been baptised but hadn't received the Spirit. And they laid their hands on them and they received. If you're open, receptive, well then receive. There are those who are hostile to the Holy Spirit. Oh, I don't agree with all of this stuff. Well, no one in history could have been more hostile than Paul. He gave approval to and was there when Stephen was executed. He tried to destroy the early church. In Acts 9, that all changed on the road to Damascus when he encountered the risen Lord Jesus and later filled with the Holy Spirit. No one's beyond the reach of being born again in Jesus and receiving the Holy Spirit. There are the uninformed, possibly baptised as a baby, confirmed, or whatever your church tradition is, as a young person or in later life. You've been to church, possibly regularly, but never really heard about the work of the Holy Spirit. 
There are some people in that, there were some people in Acts 19 in a very similar place who were ultimately filled with the Holy Spirit. Then there are the unlikely. I don't think any of this could have happened to me. I'm a spiritual person, but not a religious type. Well, read Acts 10 when, when the Gentiles, unlikely people, people like you and me, were introduced to and accepted Jesus and were filled with the Holy Spirit. One final thought from Father Renero. We shouldn't be afraid of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of joy and freedom. Paul said, where, there, where the Spirit is, there is freedom. What ultimately matters is our experience of God's love. And the cross helps us to understand his love. We all need a deep longing to be loved, cared for and wanted. You have, can have everything in the world or nothing, but we all need and want to experience love. And it's through the Holy Spirit that we experience God's love. This experience of love allows us to worship him. Worship is central to expressing our love for God. Receive the Holy Spirit. Well, people often put up barriers when it comes to receiving the Holy Spirit. Doubt, or oh, I don't think if I ask, I will receive. Fear, I believe I will receive, but what would happen? And inadequacy, I'm not worthy. You don't know what I'm like, really. Jesus said in Luke 11:13. If you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? If any of what I've said has resonated with you, why not simply ask him? This prayer is one of the most ancient prayers in the church. Lord, I'm open today to receive the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen.